Ladies and gentlemen, welcome StarCast fans, and please welcome My World with Jeff Jarrett. Here's Conrad Thompson. How's it going, everybody? Who's having fun at StarCast? Boy, do we have a treat for you guys today. We're doing My World with Jeff Jarrett. Man, we have had some great panels, though. Of course, later today, we've got some other special stuff up our sleeves, and tomorrow... How about Kawada making his first U.S. appearance in over 35 years? How cool is that? Jim Ross is going to be here. We're going to celebrate the music of AEW and TNA. If you haven't seen that panel, woo, it's going to knock your socks off. But today, it's all about The Last Outlaw. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest professional wrestler of all time, your friend and mine, Mr. Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett, ladies and gentlemen, the founder of TNA, ladies and gentlemen, the WWE Hall of Famer, ladies and gentlemen. The coldest coffee in Chicago. Is this how you're going to treat me? Seriously. I, I, it's good to see you too, Jeff. No, it ain't good to see you, Conrad. Is this going to be Do Nashville all over again? fans out here? The dumbest fan base walking God's green earth. Can I get an amen in the back on that? Amen. I told well, you. Jeff. I told you. I worked really hard to let Tony Khan do this. Let's not dump on his fans, dude. Do you see how they treat me? Last, uh, yeah, so that would be a week ago today I did a QA and a in Wembley. Did you see how I was treated? By the AEW fans? I heard about it. And now you've got me snookered into this. Oh, Jeff, we're going to do a My World podcast show. Did you tell Sanjay Dutt? Because Sanjay's not going to be here. What? It, was, it was up to you to... What are all these chairs doing out here? Uh, hey. Hey, dumbass. <laughs> Start taking these chairs off. We just need one. Uh, hey, did I call you up here? Then why are you up here? Jeff, he's a volunteer. Conrad, did I call you up here? Okay. So we're going to make it real easy. That's okay, Chris. Get the, what's, his, what's this guy, Bozo's name? He's he, part of our security. I guarantee you. Are you from, you know what? We're going to have a little fun up here. Where are you from? Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Go balls! He's missing the game just like you are, Jeff. He's not from Tennessee. That's a freaking play. You want to play games, huh? You want? Please, I, I'm I'm not joking. I'm gonna have some fun up here, Conrad. This is the coldest coffee, and I'm walking around. Isn't like it this. Starbucks? It's cold Starbucks. Are you just trying to get on camera? Here, let me get you on camera, right out here in front, right? Look right Jeff. in between there. See, Conrad, this is a... No, I seriously. Mean, All kidding aside, we're going to have fun. Get the chairs off. Get the three chairs off. You didn't tell Sanjay. I literally just got a text, and I'll read it to you. He will not be here. Okay. Well, um... Ladies and gentlemen, the last hey, outlaw, hey, Jeff Hey, Jarrett. look at our Tennessee boy. You've got to be from Alabama. Will you help him? <laughs> Seriously, help him get the chairs. Jeff, what, what are we doing hey, right now? Hillbilly. This one right here. Hi, last outlaw, Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, please. <laughs> Jeff, he's doing the job. We've got a security contract. Will you just let him do his job? No. Can we talk about no, the no. biggest show in AEW history this past weekend? Once again, you sold the wait house Wait a minute, out. wait a minute, wait a minute. You really aren't helping, are you? He can't talk. 
Do you want Chris to get that last chair or no? Who's Chris? The, the guy you've been yelling at in the red shirt. Yes. Hey, Bozo. Seriously, get off stage. We don't need you up here. Dude, why, why can't we have nice things? What are you doing? Conrad, bad mood today. Real bad mood today. But you made wrestling history. You single-handedly yes. sold 81,035 tickets. Let's hear it for uh, the last outlaw selling 81,000 tickets. I mean, I think there's even a poster about that. Oh, there you go. You can take a look at that. That was the official all-in poster that sold 81,035 tickets. Uh, set an all-time record. And uh, you single Are we going to be doing a Q&A? Well, I was hoping so, but I don't know that I want to subject everybody to you today. First of all, look, can we talk about those shoes for a minute? It's hard for me to be mad at you. I just noticed that. Like, I don't... Yeah. You love the shoes? He, he can... Oh, he's a GCW fan. He's not an AEW fan. How about that? Did you ever wrestle in GCW? I put GCW on the map in 2022. I, have now, you know? I mean, I, I don't want to, you yeah, know, I don't want to brag on your behalf, but I will say it's their biggest grossing event in history. So the biggest AEW event in history, Jeff Jarrett was on it. The biggest GCW event in history, Jeff Jarrett was on it. As a matter of fact, when you look back at the very first All In, like Starcast piggybacked All In, but when you really think about that, who first put Matt and Nick on TV? That'd be you, wasn't it, Jeffro? Why are you trying to be nice now? Well, no, I'm just saying, like, I want you to get your flowers here, but it'd be good if I could butter you up and you'd be decent to our people who are here. Decent to our people? Yep, th these people are excited to see you, Jeff. Can you just try not to be an asshole? Would nope. Be? Okay. Zero chance of that today. Cold coffee. Ask me, hey, Jeff, um, wait, who's the one who more or less let you get all the flowers on the first star cast. Who was the brains behind it in this hotel? Uh, that'd be Cody Rhodes, probably. <laughs> Why is Premier here? Who's the one that can't called you and said, hey, I think you ought to stream well, okay. all of these yes. panels. Okay, that's fair. The, the idea of streaming the event was uh, another of your innovations. But I was giving you flowers with Cody because when you were getting Global Force Wrestling going, you put the belt on Cody. You put the bucks on TV. I'm trying to give you your flowers here, man. You were a real innovator. Like you saw all of this happening before everybody. There you go. Look, there's you and Cody back in the day. That's before he was, you know, in the WWE as the top guy. Look, at his, look at his hair there. He, 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 he decided to turn it last outlaw color and... Look at him now. Look at him now. I just, yeah, I'm just saying. So listen, I, we're not argumentative. We're singing from the same uh, hymnal here. You're up to something. No, you I'm not. You want something, you're up to something. I want you to just be nice. I mean, you let me falsely advertise Sanjay Dutt, and then you blame me on stage. We know that you said, I got my guys. You don't have to worry about my guys. And then you show up here complaining about coffee and saying, Sanjay's not coming because you didn't invite him. Well, that was your job, Jeff, respectfully. <laughs> Those guys, that's your crew. And we had, all, we had chairs up there for all of them, and you made them move all the chairs. And you're complaining about the coffee not being hot. I see the steam. It, bullshit. You're trying to pick a fight. I would let you taste it, but mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, a boy from Alabama, mm -mm. no, sir. Why are they laughing at that? Because they know it's funny and true. Should we do a Q&A, or do you plan on any of these people actually appearing on the show, or what are we doing, Jeff? So, who's running the show, you or me? Well, it is called My World, and I'm not on the goddamn graphic, so I'm going to guess <laughs> but it's you. See, my security guy, he thought that was funny. Be nice to him. I thought we were paying him. It says volunteer, so be look, nice. Look, now. he's watching the screen like it's a, a, a all out tomorrow. Hey, that's a still photo. It's not going to change. Oh well. Oh. Hey, I didn't do that. 
I didn't do that. But I will tell you this. I bet that's the best. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't do that. Is this what this is all about, a big rib on uh, Double J? Not, not for me. You tried to kill I my father I had 11 a.m. pickup. Lot. What time do you think your clown pulled in to get uh, me and, and my bride and my son? Was it that clown? Oh. I, here's the thing, though. I bet that doink had the best matches doink ever had. Guaranteed. Probably took the fewest bumps, too, if I had to guess. <laughs> Welcome, folks, to Con Conrad's Comedy Hour. I can't even keep a straight face up here. I mean, you're on fire today, pal. I'm, I'm still trying, trying to, to figure out, is this a rib on me? It's not a live stage show. It's not a my world. This is, there's cameras around here. You, is, I, hey, let me ask you this. Is this your cousin or Cassio's cousin? Neither. <laughs> neither. Look at me and look at him. He's in shape. We're not related at all. If we walk together somewhere, we look like the number 10. <laughs> I, I, Folks, we, this, this entire thing, shut up, Cassio. Not just seeing you in the back pisses me off. He's, he's I, see Jeff I, been I, in I any good angles lately? Hey, you don't think I'm going to slap the taste out of your mouth? You have before. Again, Again exactly. You know what, Jowls? Judging by your shoes, you, you're selling you may, gold you again. May get a, you may get shut up. You may get a slap today. Well, that's why I have security here. <laughs> oh, so uh, who do we have? A dumbass Chernoff brother ba back there with Premier <laughs> running the, the, the images? I, here's what I know. I didn't authorize these images. Don't send me that damn cease and desist. <laughs> Look at that. Just, this, just, this just is, look at that image. This is your history of picking on people. Just, is what this is. Do what? This is your history of picking on people. Look. You're excited to see that. You assaulted my friend Beetlejuice. <laughs> you damn right I did. Well, that's not Are cool. you going to hold that against me? I mean, it was kind of funny, but it was mean. It was unprovoked. He's walking around in a Superman costume. <laughs> As a rule of thumb, you don't hit those people over the head. Not in Alabama. <laughs> Cassio, do you just want to come up here and take my place and y'all just do Conrad's Comedy Hour? No, listen. I'm trying to be, seriously, that Beetlejuice guitar shot, I made him famous. He's still relevant today because of the last hour guitar shot with a long, long list of other folks. And you want to bring me on stage and make it candid camera hour? No, I, we had all these seats out because we thought we were getting your whole faction. Like, you did a lot of cool stuff over the last year. You set a GCW record. You nearly killed my father-in-law in a parking lot. I, I didn't get the job done. Uh, you know, we were talking about T-shirts on the podcast. Did you, did, how many My World podcast listeners do we actually have in here? All right, did, did, did you hear the kind of the latest rant or, if you will, Conrad, Essentially, being I'm being another punching bag about a lot of oh. chatter. Y'all, y'all hear the lot of chatter talk. I, I had a thought over the week. You know what we need for Conrad's? We need a T-shirt. This can't be real. Yeah, I'm for that. Th right now, this can't be real. <laughs> no, I agree. I mean, we had all those chairs and all these people on the graphic, and so far, it's just you farting into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> he, he liked that one. He smiled. Jethro, you're going to get it before the show's up. <laughs> hey, yes, I, I, I can assure you that. Jeff, he's here to protect you. It's either you. Conrad, it's Cassio, or Cletus over here. Jeff, he's here. Yes, I got my crew here. Mine is Sanjay. So at this time, you know what? Oh, no. You... <laughs> I didn't know my mic was on. Sorry. <laughs> What did he say? I can't hear his crappy audio. He said he was sorry in advance. In the, just a little inside baseball here. Okay. Ric Flair's last match. Yes. We had the uh, nice press conference. Yes. I got the mayor there. Yes. Got the vice mayor there. Yeah. I got the voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, there. That's right. Um, pretty much put the whole thing together. Mm-hmm. 
and your old man or your father-in-law, whatever he is, backtalked me, and he took offense to it, right? He did. When, if you remember when I clocked him with that shoe, yes, there were three of us. One of the three of us tried to walk away. Who was that? Uh, that was Jay Lethal. Yeah, and what did he do? Oh God! Uh, oh, oh, oh God! This was all edited out, guys. Guys, he he's hurt bad. What did my bride say? Uh, she thought he could handle a little more. Let's bring the Queen of the Mountain, Karen Jarrett, up on that cue. Can y'all hear me? Ugh. I don't know about y'all, but these two have me stressed out. I'm sweating. I'm... Hush. What is wrong with you today? But that, that jackass, you know what... Look, Ooh. now she's going to be baby face up here. She was no. dog cussing you standing out in the front of the hotel. What? Where's the ride? Where's the ride? Where's the ride? He wasn't driving the van. It's not his fault. See? There we go. A little logic. Conrad, you have to... He's pretty good to us. I'm not going to vouch for his staff, but you're... You're good to us. Well, Miss Karen, I want you to know, Jeff's been picking on our security over here. He's here for y'all's protection. If somebody tries to get on the stage and harm you, you don't have to worry about Wait it. Wait a minute. He'll Cletus protect. is here to protect me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You got heat here, buddy. Because they're AEW fans. Yes. The, who truly don't know wrestling talent when they see it. Well, I mean, they, they were clapping what are you for you. about? Just sit, hey, just sit down. What do you, what see you what I live about? with? What? Why is it cheap? What is it true? Oh, God. Stay on the stage. What would you say? Just wish we could hear him. See, he just put you over. He said you're one of the talent. I don't need you chiming in. Jeff, can we be nice? Nope. Do we want to do, do a Q&A? I'm going to go do sit with talk Conrad. To Ms. Karen? We'll haul your ass on over there and <laughs> sit with Conrad then. Karen, how, how... This is not helping. Whoa, whoa, who said that? This is not helping. What did you say? Yeah, we want to make sure our streaming audience here... I said, I mean, I'm a happily married man, but sweetheart, if you want to come sit with me, you most definitely can. Me and Jeff have already talked. He so, won't play me what was I saying so. about AEW fans? <laughs> worthless. Absolutely worthless. In broad daylight, trying to hit on my wife. There you go. Typical AEW fan. Who shot who? My goodness, Jeff. Is this out of the photo album? What are we looking at right here? It's our Christmas card. It's our Christmas card this year. Is that after a live viewing of The Passion of the Christ, or what's going on there? Yeah, Cassio's just chuckling away, a little chrome dome back there. That's a good one. Hit, hit the brood theme song, and y'all are all set on that one. I would say this, y'all. I would not advise to backtalk Jeff. Because it would be so embarrassing to get your ass kicked by a guy in sequin shoes. Like, you, nobody wants that. They don't, Jeff. Oh, Britt Baker. Okay, shoes. now that's really shitty. <laughs> here we, here, now, that's way now below it's the about belt. To really get fun. You should probably shut up now. Oh. All right, Cassio, let's try to get this train. Who's got a real question for anybody on the panel? Here we go in the back. We got a bona fide Hall of Famer here. Let's put some respect on his name. Yeah. So um, I believe you were one of the first, if not the first, person to predict that there was going to be a wrestling boom. Yeah. I think you did it in like six, seven, eight years ago. So I just want to know what specifically in the market that you saw that led you to that conclusion so early. You have to be like an old school, maybe USWA fan. You've got an IQ. You, brilliant question. Look at him over there going. No, I mean, 
I saw an interview with you in 2014 that you said we're on a cusp of a boom. And then in 2016, you said it's right around the corner. And then, you know, 2018, all in. 2019, AEW. And now just in the last two weeks, WWE and AEW set records. You saw this before anybody else. I mean, there's a lot of your fans in here who respect your mind. They just wish you weren't such, you know, so much of an asshole as you are. Go to hell. Okay. Good question, though. All kidding aside, the this right here, I, I truly that I, you could just uh, if we'll dive into uh, the story behind the story. I remember saying that, and when I got done with it, I got chuckles uh, from from several people in her circle. Obviously, the timing, you know, when you see the progression, but when you kind of look back at the generations of booms in the period. When you look at 80, 81, 82, 83, kind of, I'll call it the territories, like I can remember hearing stories from my father, like every territory was red hot. Yes, the Crockett's had Dusty and Flair. We had Lawler and Dundee, Florida, you know, just every territory around the country. But um, television programmers around the country really opened their eyes and saw that okay, this wrestling thing that we can put on Saturday morning or Saturday night, it kind of gets monster ratings. And then the live event business was driven. Fast forward, boom of cable television, WrestleMania took off, uh, just kind of that whole generation. It really didn't peak in a lot of ways. We call it the Attitude Era. But seven, six, seven, eight years later, it was that, that Attitude Era that ju just boomed. And then, in a lot of ways, there was a, a, a down cycle. We started TNA. Uh, we've talked about it extensively on the pay-per-view. Uh, I think if you could have picked a time to start a wrestling company in the last 50 years, we picked the absolute worst time to start an alternative 2002. It was very, very tough. Cable industry, w w they just, because of all the shock jock stuff in the attitude era they weren't interested so that digital space but when things started to progress and the wwe network and I, I saw the success of that i really did go okay youtube's exploding At tna we were early adopters of youtube social media twitter by about 2014 15 had really started the tra trajectory um just that whole thing and i i really really did look at and go you know what, I can watch wrestling around the world on my phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's a boom coming because collectively the talent was coming, the technology was coming. It was just going to be kind of a, a, a crosshairs of the business was going to go up. And I still believe that when you look at, well, I'm an OG Taylor Swift. Any Taylor Swift fans in here? Okay. Uh, she was on the very beginning of, you know, she started her career on MySpace and, and she just set a record in the process of setting a record. She's selling a concert into movie theaters, you know, setting records. So I believe that we're going to see a professional wrestling star, a talent, because the boom is here, I believe. We're going to see somebody break out that is organically made on social media. That's, that's another one of my predictions that may or may not come true, but I've got a lot of crazy ones. But no, uh, I, I do think technology, and, and as we, um, I'll, I'll put a button on this, but Casio knows and Conrad knows, and maybe we'll share this on the podcast. I believe the, the, the next kind of skyrocket thing is going to come in, uh, how wrestling's programmed, so I'll leave it at that. See, that's what we wanted, Jeff. Thank you. Yes. That was, that was we very like well done. this side of you. We got another question in the back. Yeah, Jeff, as someone who's been in the business for such a long time, generations, you mentioned how there's a big boom coming. Money changes things. You've worked with many different companies and different promotions. Obviously, Endeavor just put billions of dollars into WWE. Are other big multinational companies like that going to come in and start investing on wrestling at that level again in other ways outside of WWE? I want to make sure I'm answering your question. Are are big companies going to keep investing in, like how Endeavor just bought into WWE, Turner Broadcasting was in with WCW, is more outside money going to come into the industry? Are people going to start seeing the value from the outside in and then buying into it? 
It's kind of a mixed bag of a question, I think, because anybody can put on a wrestling show, but how many people can put on a compelling, good wrestling show 52 weeks a year? That's, at the end of the day, that is where the magic's made, the consistent programming. So the short answer is yes, because uh, just like in the 50s, wrestling is relatively inexpensive to produce, and content is king, and you can create a lot of content. And I, I think the international growth is, 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 is another gigantic wave coming. But your question is, are other companies without question? Because content's king, and, and the wrestling industry can create a massive amount of content for relatively uh, small dollars. Jeff, do you think you'll ever try to start another wrestling company, or will you just push Tony Khan out and take over AEW? <laughs> you are the biggest prick. What? No, I was talking to Dixie the other right. day, and she was okay, saying... Okay, now... now what? That oh, he, yes, he said that, the, the, yeah. the, the four-letter word that's really yeah. a five that starts with the D. That's going to make my head spin. Oh, sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, we're not going sorry there today. Sorry about that. I think we, maybe we can do another question, and I won't get in trouble here. If, if you want, before we get into that question, the international and my man, and I just recognized who asked that question. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I would like to bring another member of... Okay, all right. This is what we wanted, yeah. <laughs> What's on the graphic, Miss Karen? You see? Like, I was like, okay, well, there's two, but there's... And I've said it from the day I met him. Uh, I'm a basketball junkie, so I'm partial to uh, the athleticism in basketball. But I'd like to uh, bring, and I've said this on the podcast over and over and over, if you single out Karen or Sanjay or Jay or Sat or myself, we all have our strengths, uh, but we obviously ha have all of, you know, like everyone, we have our weaknesses. But I think collectively, uh, as our group of five, it's, in a lot of ways, never been done. Yes, there have been plenty of groups of threes, fours, and fives. But the diversity and the look and the uniqueness uh, that our group, we don't, I, I, and I'm going to say this proudly, we don't really have a weakness. So uh, at this time, I'd like you guys to put your hands together, and I'd like to bring on stage the seven foot four, wow. one in a billion Satnam Singh. How about that? Get him! Get him! Get him! Oh. Hey, Jed, get you. Oh, have you done anything all day? Like anything? Like anything? Jeff, he's here for your protection. He's got to be from Huntsville. No. Got to be. My crew rode together. Ladies and gentlemen, Sutton, I'm singing. Uh, I, I just felt this for the first time, and I, I want to try to get a visual. Karen, could you hold your hand up next to Sotnam, and let's just compare hand-to-hand -hand what we're doing right here. Uh, yeah, it wrapped around my hand. Uh, wow, thank you for being here. Come here, Conrad. Stand up, Sotnam. Oh, here we go. Oh, boy. Put your foot out here. Yeah, I'm, I'm a size 12. Seriously. Wow. <laughs> that's that's 22 21 okay well wow. I, I want to see this joust i hope you uh, I don't know. I, uh yeah throw some barbs at sotnam there i'm not guy. saying shit to sotnam uh, <laughs> thank you for being here mr singh cassio Work. ask a question please yeah we got a question from apparently many sotnam here all right Hey guys, thanks for letting me ask a question. Jeff, uh, as the greatest wrestler that's ever lived, uh, who single-handedly drew 81,035 people into London by yourself, uh, Tony Khan's other baby, Fulham, five years ago brought in 85,200 into that same stadium. Tell me what it's going to take a year from now for you to break that record, again, single-handedly. Real simple. Just bring in more chairs. <laughs> Conrad, we're going to sell the seats. I mean, if we put you in a title match, come on. That, uh, just bring in more chairs. Yep. That's the best answer. There used I've to ever be heard. Hogan and others, Austin and others. Jarrett and Clan. Jarrett and family. There Jarrett you go. and Co. Yeah. It's weird. I watched the whole pay per view, Jeff, but I didn't see you on it. 
Casio. Were you on the YouTube before or something? We got another question in the back. Hey, Jeff, uh, this is a non-wrestling question, actually. Uh, I was just wondering how you got the gig in Spring Breakers and what it was like working with Harmony Corinne. Right on. Uh, quick show of hands, because it's, it's, yeah, I always <laughs> have fun with this. Who actually has seen Spring Breakers? I saw yeah. it. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's not a... Uh, uh, I was sitting at my desk at TNA offices, got an email... Uh, they, it's a real short, brief description. Val Kilmer was supposed to play the part. He's been rescheduling. We're looking for this. We thought of you as a youth pastor that had a, a wrestling spin on it. Um, I kind of thought it was a rib, so I responded right back. Yeah, I'm interested. Oh, great. They responded back. This whole thing took 20, 30 minutes. Uh, will you do a quick read? Uh, folks may know Dan Engler, Rudy Charles, whatever you know. He was working with me at the time. We go into the conference room. I, I did a read, and it was real simple. My just, it was a, a real simple read. But in the description of the movie, uh, gosh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Vanessa Hudgens, um, Selena Gomez, that was it. Selena Gomez, um, James Franco, but there was some really cool stars. Keep in mind, our oh. girls oh. grew up with the high school musical. So when you hear those names, you think, oh. That, so, and we were going on spring break. So we got to leave three days early uh, and went down to St. Petersburg, filmed the, the, the movie, and then went on and spent a week at the beach and, and then came back. But I was telling the girls and Karen, hey, we get to go meet, the, take the girls on the way. Selena Gomez, oh, they're going to be over the moon. This is great. So we did all that. And when the movie came out, girls, we're not watching that movie. <laughs> no, the girls were not watching that movie. You got any questions for, for, for Sotnam? You, Conrad, because I do. I'll give you some flowers. I've, I've said it. You're, he, hey, let's give a round of applause for oh, my man, on. Conrad. <laughs> Hall of Famer. <laughs> Hall of Famer, Conrad Thompson. <laughs> and I do. It, it is a highlight of my week when I get to do my world. Uh, but I will say this. He's mortgages by day and likes to call. He's a fanatical belt guy and wrestling fan. That was our one of our common bonds. But... When I step back and, and put my business cap on through the years, um, the, the one thing that I, I think Conrad has a skill set, damn, why am I being nice? I started out in a horrible mood up here today. I grow got, on you. And you got freaking Jethro over here looking. He really, I can't believe. He's here to protect us. Yeah, Cletus. protect. Anyway, I think Conrad has such a unique skill set in that he can get me to say almost anything. <laughs> he has a really, really good talent on interviewing. So I am very curious, as a fan, I mean this, you got any questions for Sotnam? Like, what, what do you think these, you know, what I'm, you, got, you always know how to push the right button. Like, I didn't even think of that. I'd like to hear his thoughts. Anything for Sotnam? I, I guess, Mr. Singh, what I'm wondering is, what is your long-term goal? I mean, you know as long as you're with Jeff, he's going to be in the main event and you're going to be in the background. But I think everybody here... What the fuck? Yeah. Well, no, no. <laughs> yes. I'm like, my God. But you just see him and you're like, well, this is the main event of a pay-per-view right here. Are you trying to break our group up right now? No, no, today? no. I just... Look Nobody at that can't shot break right us. there. Okay. Nobody can break us. Because okay. We are a great team. <laughs> What is your goal? That's a great question. What, like, what is your goal in wrestling? Do you have a goal in wrestling? Like, we have a lot of goals, but our biggest goal is that we are get the championship with, the, with my team. Yes, that's the goal. So you guys gonna do trios? You think, or you want the tag titles? Or I would love to do a trios. That's kind of a I'll call that a short term goal. But I, I'll say this, and it, you asking that question. You're talking my to goal, Jeff. We want it all. Yeah, we want yeah. all of them. My my goal for Sotnam and I truly believe this with all my heart. I would love to play the smallest of part, but I would love for Sotnam to perform in the main event. Yes. In northern India, where he's from, so yep. I'll let him decide. But I would love to produce or be a part of or w whatever role it is for him to go back home to India and uh, wrestle in his home country because uh, the, the real story in, in the documentary, folks, if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix, One in a Billion. Sotnam left home as a basketball player, 12 years of age. 
No, uh, I was like nine years old. Eight, eight or nine years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young. young. Uh, I saw, I, I've seen his parents uh, on FaceTime a couple of times. But he left home to pursue a dream, uh, and he accomplished that goal. He was drafted, uh, the first Indian player to ever to be drafted in the NBA. But I, I would love to go back to India and uh, let him wrestle. International title? I mean, in India? I mean, really, let's be honest. It would be a short day at the office for him and Orange Cassidy. I was going to say, I don't think Orange in that whole like, list of folks that he's snookered into wrestling and win again, typical AEW. Sotten ain't going to fall for that with your tutelage, though. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Cassie, let's do another one. So, um, hi, Queen Karen. Hi. Uh, off of the Spring Breakers question, um, when we make the movie about the story of Jeff Jarrett, Who's going to play you guys in the That's movie? a great question. So when the, the, the biopic you, comes Conrad. out, <laughs> well, who would you want to portray you, Miss Karen? Oh. Hi. <laughs> okay. What if we did, Jeff, I mean, who would you like to play you? I'm thinking like somebody who we know could pull off any part, a veteran character actor. Oh. McConaughey's oh. decent. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like, what if we went with like a veteran talent, like Danny DeVito? See, now, you I, like you said you want, we were going to play nice, I, and like I, I, you I, and Cassio I knew it. keep Cassio, throwing Cassio, let me hear in. your dumbass suggestion. Like, to play you? Yes, I can't. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell? Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> we got a ton of questions. You asked for it. You we got a ton of questions. It. Hey, Jeff, calm down. We got a ton of Jeff, questions. Jeff, we're just kidding around. How about the blonde haired guy from Duke Hazard? John Bo Schneider? Duke. Hey, John Schneider. Jeff. I think he's older than we are, isn't he? Man, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Baby. He's a volunteer. Calm down. No, but you're pressing all the wrong buttons. <laughs> well, I was just kidding. You don't look anything like Danny DeVito. Matthew McConaughey, all right, all right, all right. We're good with it. In Dallas Buyers Club. Not the de ask another question. I think I think somebody else needs to hold the mic besides Cassio. Hey guys, I thank you so much uh, for doing this. Uh, my question for Jeff: uh, What are some of your favorite memories of the Mid South Coliseum? There we go. And um, also, I know in recent years uh, Jerry Lawler has tried to go, go out of his way to try to convince the city of Memphis to uh, to keep the building intact. Are you still hopeful for that? Uh, that they'll keep the memories intact, uh, or maybe try not to demolish the, the Mid South Coliseum? Uh, a relatable story in Nashville, the sports arena uh, used to sit where now our current soccer stadium is in Nashville. So, you know, progress and developments and li life goes on. I'm kind of very doubtful at this point just because old venues just don't really, they, they don't last. I mean, in, in, in Memphis, there's three or four others. I mean, I would love it. It's kind of crazy. It sits on the fairgrounds, a huge Enormous people, property. You could revitalize that easily and 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 do a bunch of different things. But uh, in the political climate we live in, not just in Nashville or Memphis or Tennessee, all over the country, really all over the world, I have no idea. But um, you know, favorite memories of, of of Memphis: the ride down every Monday, um, leave my house around noon, get there around three or four o'clock. Those kind of you know, every Monday night for seven years. Uh, very, very few. I was in a car wreck and I missed one. I mean, there's less than 10 times that I missed Memphis over seven years. So loads and loads and loads of memories. Uh, I watched Ric Flair versus Coco Ware as a young kid, as a fan. I'll never forget kind of the electricity in the building that was just, it, you can't, it's one of those things, uh, obviously everybody in this room is a wrestling fan on some level, but when you're a little kid, the impressionable, um, things that happen that you never lose that you're it's, I'll never forget it because Coco was um, mid to upper card uh, but the storyline he got a shot in Memphis uh, and Rick you know told a story that was unbelievable everybody in the building thought Coco just might win it and that's kind of the things that make you uh, fall in love uh, with, with the with, with the business um, Maybe a story behind the story. Um, okay. Um, I don't know if we've told this on the podcast, but um, Lawler Idol 
hair versus hair, and if there's any Memphis historians, uh, help me out. Uh, wasn't it Lawler and Idol, hair versus hair? Lawler lost his hair, and the finish was Tommy Rich came from under the ring. Any Memphis? What? Anyway, that was it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, the story I remember now, I'm 20, 21, 22, not young guy uh, had only been drinking beers a couple of years so I you know I, I, my cardinal rule never drink till after the matches and um, Tommy Rich uh, was put under the ring um, before the doors were open and he had a 12 pack um, and a bucket uh, and he was under the ring that's how we did it you didn't really think of production deals and I'll never forget Eddie Marlin my grandfather, before the show started, uh, and you have to know the little, the dressing room, Mid-South Coliseum, you go down a long hallway, take your first right, Lawler's dressing room, uh, bathroom, it, uh, there's another one, and then I dressed on the, the end uh, every time, and anyway, I'm in my dressing room, and I hear Lawler get loud, and then, you know, he's kind of throwing a fit, but you're like, okay. So I just kind of ease out. I'm the young kid, and I'm kind of eavesdropping in on the conversation. And then Lawler's kind of final words, words were, well, shit. If, if we don't do this, he may not stay under there, and we got to hide him. He, he, he's the main event. So Eddie Marlin proceeded to get the runner, went to a convenience store, came back with another 12-pack, uh, and uh, Tommy had run out of beer, so they gave him more beer. <laughs> to stay under the ring and come out during the finish. So there, you know, the territory days or I don't even call the territory days. That sounds, but just how our world has evolved and it is so transparent. Boy, back in the day, very little transparency because if the fans had really known that Tommy was coming out of there with 18 beers in, it was, um, but anyway, Mid-South Coliseum. I, I love that place, uh, Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Louisville Gardens, in Louisville, Evansville Coliseum, and the National Sports Arena. Those four buildings, I've had more matches in those four just because of uh, having, you know, the, the, the opportunity in, in the situation. So I appreciate your question. Jeff, do we, uh, do we have anybody else we want to bring up? Yeah, there's a lot of people on the graphic. I just want to make sure. Is your show Smile You're World? You're making me feel like we're not good enough. Oh, no, you're great. I just... I don't want Jeff to be upset with me that I maybe he, didn't introduce he, somebody else. I or? can't wait till me, you, and Sanjay get in the same room because Sanjay goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. When your folks says, we, we've got it, and it's to my understanding the same situation with Jay Lethal. Okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's do a few more here. We got yeah. Oh, comedy. Conrad. So, uh, Mr. Jarrett, uh, earlier we were talking about how if we wanted to single-handedly sell out uh, all, all in next year just from you single-handedly, we needed more chairs. But I got a better idea. The main event, Jeff Jarrett versus Grado for the AW World Ooh. Championship in front of 90,000 Jarrett singing like a prayer. How do you think about, what do you think about that? Well, in that scenario, it means you're already AEW champion, so I like that. <laughs> right? That'd be good. You think there's a chance that you walk out with some gold uh, Sunday night? Tomorrow night? Yeah. yeah. How about that? Look at that. Whoa, we got a little AEW. How about that, Conrad? Yeah, I think it's possible. I would love nothing more than just a crow like you. You, Folks, if you knew. Yeah. He's being positive right now. Uh, but you know what? He's, he's, he's so like, foolish. But, I think he's being genuine. I am. I do right now. Like, there's times I. You think you're Conrad's not, being genuine? At this moment. When he's got Cletus over here and there's some kind of rib going on. What are you talking about? I think. Hey, if you get the belt, you're over. That's good business for him. You guys hey. are in business together. My point, it all circles back to Conrad's billfold. <laughs> yeah, can I get amen out of that? <laughs> See? Oh Wait, is that you, Silva? Oh, no. I just thought of a good name for your movie when it comes out about your life. Oh, What'd you say? I thought about a good name for the movie about your life when it comes out. Twelve pack in a bucket. Uh, 
I mean, I think that'd be the, the Tommy Rich story, but we'll do another question here. Yeah, for Jeff, um, Louisville, Kentucky guy here, used to watch you on TV on Saturdays. I saw your very first match on television, but you weren't a wrestler at the time. You were a referee. Did you have aspirations? Did you know you were going to be a wrestler, or was the referee thing kind of just a way to get you in? Because I remember that storyline uh, and the beatdown of your dad and you, and they left you bloody, and it was a, a great storyline, or a great, I shouldn't say storyline, because they beat the hell out of you, but it was a great arc to tell this this beautiful way to get you into the family business. And was that your goal all along, or were you like, I'm cool being a wrestler, I mean, a, a ref, and you know, I'm, I'm good with that? You know, or did it just kind of, it was fate? I'd love to sit up here and tell you it was this huge mastermind story with Jerry Jarrett and Jerry Lawler, but the reality was I was playing college basketball, and my plan was to play all four years. Uh, but Lawler had lost a loser leave town and was taking time off, and the territory went down and down and down and down. And um, they were like, Jerry, we got to get you back because my dad and Lawler were partners. Uh, they were like, Jerry, we got to get you back going, so we need to come up with some kind of storyline. Um, and I had refereed the previous summers, the previous two summers, I guess going into my uh, yeah junior year and senior year of high school, but never on TV, just small spot shows, high school gyms, armories, and all that. And um, they made the decision, hey, let's come up with this story. Uh, Dundee and Landell were hot heels, but they just didn't have any baby faces, and they I think the people were waiting, or I don't think that is the story. They were waiting on Lawler to come back and kick ass. Uh, they had tried a couple of diff different ways to do it, and they came up with the story. And the original kind of thought process was, Jeff, you be refereeing and uh, get your ass beat. And my dad was the real promoter, uh, but Eddie Marlin was the figurehead matchmaker. But they did the story and beat the shit out of me. And, you know, my dad, emotional promo, which uh, is, to me, not his promos, but he's one of them. The emotional, Cody Rhodes has a lot of it in him. No screaming, no hollering, no yelling, just pure emotion. And he made the, you know, made the promo, brought Lawler back. And I went back to school. Uh, the original plan was, Jeff, finish out your freshman year of, of uh of college, come referee in the summers, you got basketball and go back uh, in, the, in the fall. Uh, but the angle clicked. It's the last sellout in the Mid-South Coliseum. Uh, and Lawler came back and, you know, it was, they were, they ran that. And um, my dad and Lawler said, hey man, he was a part of this. Maybe there's something to this. But that all came kind of on the fly. And, you know, <laughs> The crazy part about it was I was supposed to go back to school in the fall and I was just going to kind of wrestle, and but it took off. And I went from wrestling that first match against Tony Falk, the actual first match, and then the following Saturday I wrestled, and then I wrestled six or seven nights a week for seven years. It just it took off and never went back to school. And we're glad you didn't. Here's a big question. How is your, how is the match against Jeff Hardy in the tex, Texas Chainsaw Death Match? Scary. We did an entire podcast on that, partner. Um, you know what? Let's do a little focus group here. I'm trying to think of the right question to sample this. Uh, I loved it. Um, it is. It was unique, but it is a lightning rod of emotion that some folks were uh, just turned upside down that we would do that kind. But uh, uh, who saw that? Who actually saw that on program? A round of applause. Who saw that? Oh, how about that? <laughs> who thought it was fun and entertaining? I need to know, what was this little boy's name? What's his name? What's your name? I am so proud of you for getting up and asking a question. That was awesome. Awesome. Good question. Oh, yeah. So, She's so, got a so, baby face now. So now the other side. Well, Who hated the Texas Chainsaw segment? By round of applause. All right. Do you re no, we won't get into the Cornette conversation. I'll, st I, I, I'll still say uh, 
He absolutely loved it because it gave him great content to talk about. Yes. And God forbid if a guy who carries around a tennis racket <laughs> as a weapon. No, I'm kidding. I love Cornette. Uh, he did. He just. I don't know if you Are those know Cornette that. shoes you're wearing. Hey, don't. Hey. Rockstar Do you know what these shoes are? And that this you're going to. I'm going to. Be real sappy in a minute. This is the last gift that his dad gave him before he passed away, so you need to back off the shoes. How about a round of applause for Mr. Jerry Jarrett? When Poppy, when Jeff started back on TV, that was Poppy's thing. He got him red shoes, silver shoes, and red shoes. Gold, red, gold and silver were the last two. So yeah. I wish you would have given him his temperament and not just the shoes. Right. Because your dad was just a lovely oh, hey, man. That's where he gets it from. He gets it from his dad. I don't know. I, oh. I only saw the polite <laughs> Mr. Jerry. I, I've seen a lot of asshole Jeff today, though. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. There's the Cody boys right there. Yep. I mean, you came in here hooting and hollering about coffee and fussing and volunteers. And you, you, you guys were late. late. Cold coffee. Sanjay. Yeah, freezing now. <laughs> Sanjay. This guy up here, the stage, why did y'all have so many people? It was, it's embarrassing. Seriously, embarrassing. And I know Premier is taking orders from you, so don't try to throw it off from Premier. I'm very happy that they are on board. I've known the Chernoff brothers uh, for, for a long time. They got their stuff together. And, and so you don't pawn it off. You are the ones that directed Habitat. What are you, like David Letterman or like sitting over there at your big desk over there? And you put us on your, your panel He's here. He's not even paying attention all the time. He gets on his phone. I have noticed that. Do you do that during the podcast when Jeff all, talks? All, all the time. All, all the time. <laughs> kind of amazes me. He's Googling something to come up on his phone, not paying attention. And then the next thing he comes out, he gives me a question and makes me cry. It just pisses <laughs> me off. We got another question right here. Jeff is a talent who's been through uh, multiple eras and continuing to reinvent yourself and with the boom of wrestling today with all the different programmings. What is your opinion on sh talent sharing between the promotions? Is it good or bad for the business? That is a double-edged sword because if you ask me as a uh, promoter, oh, God, no, you, you can't, no. Um, I, I think it, in a lot of ways, in the world we live in, and I know this is, it gets way into the weeds, um, Trying to think how to, to explain this concisely. I'll give it to you this. Um, AEW, we just did 81,000 plus. It, yes, it was my graphic that, that, that did all that. But not one match was announced. So was there any one town on there that, oh, my God, they sold it out? No. Outside of me, no. Um, but, but the brand did. So I believe exchange of talent on whatever level is super healthy, not just, I, I think it's multitude. Yes, the fans absolutely eat it up. But it also gives a freshness to our industry and a spontaneity. And I didn't ever, it, that whole mindset. Obviously, we're entertainment, uh, minus Conrad's ass. But, you know, we're all about entertainment. So, so the, the, the tuning into a movie or a television show and you go, I didn't expect to see that. I really like that. It, in a lot of ways, that's what it's about. So I think it's very, very healthy. Back to that statement I made about a wrestling boom. Um, it, in the 08, 09, 2010, 2011, uh, there were many, many conversations. And we would do things. We did things with AAA. We had a great re relationship with New Japan. We were getting there as far as really working with the other promotions. I think it's vital, and I think the old term, uh, you know, rising – Tide lifts all ships. I think that's the simplistic way to look at it. I think it is an absolute win, win, win. Win for fans, win for wrestlers, and win for promotions. See, Jeff, we need more of this version of Jeff. Are you like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or whatever Don't tell that me is. what we do don't need. I'll just say I like this. We got collision well tonight. Yeah. You going to be in catering or are you going to do something? Oh, my God. See? Like, you're right. the one that brings the other side out. I was just asking questions. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, 
I was going to drink that. We'll do, we'll do a few more wait, here. Wait, wait, no, no, we're not skipping over this. What? Am I going to do something or am I going to be in catering? You think that's, do you know how many guys show up at AEW and are pissed off because they're just in catering? And you're there's, making there's, fun of it. There's five on the graphic right there. As a, your mouth. as a friend of mine Hush says, your mouth. speak when spoken to, all of you idiots. As a friend of mine says, tell me when I'm telling lies. I would love for your friend to step in the ring with the last outlaw one time. Never, never happened. Now, tell me when I'm telling lies. No, I'd be all about that. You're my you favorite would? wrestler. I want more of you on TV. I don't yeah, know why my, you're offended That's my by problem. That. You think it's all fun and games. Question right. in the middle. What, Cassio? We're doing another question, Jeff. Shut up. Hey, guys. Uh -huh. So I know Conrad's kind of busting your balls, Jeff, a little bit, but um, kind of wanted to. You think? <laughs> kind of had a two-parter for you here. Your 2022, I really put you up there as like one of the wrestlers of the year for that year. Like all the different stuff that you did from GCW to. Is this a freaking compliment sandwich? I've. Well, yeah, I know this bullshit. I'm getting to my part here. Right? I'm, here we go. Oh, hey, 2022. Let me name it for you. GCW started the year off, sold Hammerstein out. NWA, Crockett Cup, by far the best part of that show. Um, Ric Flair's last match. If it hadn't have been for me in front of the camera and behind the camera, you wouldn't see this guy up here on stage. Uh, SummerSlam. I mean, that was a big stadium. Speak spoken to, please. <laughs> Jeff, I don't mean to remind you, but this is my convention. I know it's your show, but this is my convention. So. Oh, is that right? I, I mean... I got security here if you want to make it a thing. Let's let this moron, so you're... Thank you, buddy. <laughs> so, my second part... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Cletus, did you just come up on stage? <laughs> so, you're Conrad's boy. Well, he's security, Jeff. Calm hey, down. Yes, 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 yes. Calm down, Jeff. Have a seat. All right, we got a question in the crowd, Jeff. We're almost Hold on. When I want your opinion, <laughs> trust me, I'll ask you. For now, sit there and shut up. Look like a moron. You're doing a great job. <laughs> now, don't be pointing over there in all this. Okay. All right, second part of the question is. What was the first part? <laughs> no, second. Because the first part was the compliment sandwich. Yeah. Well, so my, I'm leading into it. 2023. What's the first question? First, uh, the fir there's only one question. It's a two. That's what my point. It's a compliment sandwich. I've been around the block a few times. Hey Jeff, you had this great 2022. Here it comes. I'm doing my due diligence. Coming into 2023, you didn't necessarily have the best year. It's kind of been almost humbling for you in certain ways because you've been kind of put. You, sure, you're back on it. You're at NAAW, but secondly, it's kind of on the back burner, it seems, in a lot of ways. You've, and on top of that, you've kind of mentioned in the back, like you didn't want to be like Hulk Hogan and take somebody's spot. Do you kind of take that in a contradictory I'm sorry, way? who the fuck are you? <laughs> like, my you know, God. You know who I am. <laughs> what? He's asking if you're like Hogan now, just taking a roster spot. Yes, yo. Let yeah. the moron, I want to hear this stupid-ass question. Before I come out there and slap the taste out of your mouth. Get, get it out. Jeff, calm down. But Shut up. No, what I'm kind of getting at, though, is how do you kind of take it, all the criticism that you're getting online from social criticism. media? Criticism? Yeah. with Criticism? With? Bring it on. With the hey, people. Do you know how many times I have been the highest rated segment on the show, dumbass? I understand that. But the aspect is a lot of people from, like, growing stars and trying to, 
position themselves to a level that you were maybe in like 2022, you're kind of necessarily taking that away from people in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a bad, I don't think that's a bad question. That is exactly what's wrong with the world today. You're saying, hey, Jeff, get out of the way and give guys handouts. Do you think that happened to me? A lot, to be Wait, honest. Shut your stinking mouth, you prick. Jeff, you think I'm Jeff, playing hey, around? Hey, Jeff. Shut up! Hey, man. Hush. You think, I, you think that I should just step out of the way? Go, go look at the Orange Cassidy Interna International title match. Highest rated show. Concession stand match. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Go look at the beginning of the year when me, Satna, and Jay in the acclaimed. I could go on and on and on. So you're saying, I'll oh, just step aside. I'm in saying. Shut up! In November when I debuted, oh, God, what the heck? Jeff, we're, I think we this have, is unnecessary. I, I think we, can we break this up? Because I think we have another guest. Can we, like, break it up for a minute? Like, let's just all take a breather for a minute. Like, just oh, a hey, breath. all right! Ladies take and gentlemen. Woo! Oh, my God, here, have a seat. Yeah, what's going on here, huh? Hey, round of applause for Jay Lethal. <laughs> Big run in. Wait, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. What did I walk into? <laughs> Jeff, we're going to rearrange and get everybody. Uh, or do you got to hurry back and get to catering? <laughs> Jeff, Jeff. Hey, we got to get some more security in here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today for my world. This is uh You good, Okay, we're right? bringing the chair. I'm trying to Oh, oh whoa. Folks, stay tuned to Collision tonight. Thanks for coming to StarCast. Hey, thanks for coming. Perfect.